Hello, welcome back on my channel. Thank you so much for joining me again for another advent calendar video and reverse advent calendar. I just realized it's already the 10th. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? It, like, December, where are you? It's not, it, it, it hasn't been 10 days, has it? Shoot, I'm flying way too fast and I have so much more to do. So I think today I'm going to be focusing on my hallway. There's quite a few things that I can move. Let's see if it's going to be a full box. I still have the box in my living room and not in the garage from yesterday. So I'm going to have to find a way to visually show how much I'm going to get rid of. Because later today I have a lovely young lady coming in who is taking a lot of things off my hands. And she mentioned that quite a few of the items that I've gathered yesterday she would love to take. I still have it in my living room because I don't physically bring everything into the garage if she's gonna take it away today anyways, right? Oh, not yesterday, the day before actually, because yesterday we cleaned up the terrace thingy. So let's see how we're going to visualize that. But first let's open this. Some kind of drops, some liquid in there. Is there like flavor drops maybe? I've never had flavor drops, like liquid flavor drops. That excites me. I always wanted to try them. Okay, yes, yes, aroma and uh, sweeteners, flavor drops, Lean Life's flavor drops. No idea if it's a good brand or not. And what's, yes, cheesecake, cheesecake flavor drops. Okay, I've got um, cheesecake powder as a flavor. Not the biggest fan, but hopefully I love putting them in like anything. Flavor and protein powder and all of this. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yes, that tastes like cheesecake. Mm -hmm. It tastes like a lot of oh, a lot of artificial sweetener too. Oh yeah, well, duh, you shouldn't be eating them pure. So, Woo wee! <laughs> All right, let's get started with the hallway. Let's go. Last year I did a daily advent calendar unboxing and I really enjoyed that a lot. But guess what? This year I want to do the reverse. My main thing is going to be to get shit out of my house. So I'm going to do a reverse advent calendar. My advent calendar doors are going to be this big box times 24. My challenge is to get 24 boxes like this filled. Wish me luck. bags in here sorted so I'll be keeping for now this one because this was the first location that I launched in the job so all the other bags are going but I'll be trying to fill these two and this will hopefully be the equivalent of a box today So please, in the comments, go and vote. Should I keep number one? You can vote for two scarves to keep. This is number one. Is the lighting okay? I hope the lighting is okay. And we have more purpley green. Number two, not even a scarf wearer. Then the number three is the fairy loot one. I love gold, but is this really a scarf to wear? I don't have a place in the van to use it, I think. Probably probably number three is not going to make it. Number four was in a subscription box as well. And I really enjoy the blue with like a purple berry lip. Then I think this is number five. I love the little like glitter in here. And pink is just my color, but does it wash me out? But it goes well with almost everything that I have. 
and then the last one number six is this flowery birds i really like it so what do you think vote for two okay so the white wine is already gone let's get rid of the red wine okay well, we're gonna drink that today I easily have more than one box full. It looks so weird to have it this empty, to have this this empty. My the shelf has already been cleaned out with so much. Next, we have some bags and jackets. I'm not I don't think I'm ready for this challenge. Up here we have some shoes that I'm thinking about putting up um, because they're new, unworn and but maybe I can also put my like these are tools. I can put them into the garage because I won't be able to use those for the van. They're way too big. I want to get like a small tiny version. And then this like clear cover that I bought and never used. We can put that into the garage and i think the guitar is going to be one of those things that i'm going to keep because this is the guitar that i that my dad had in like the 70s and i had as a 16 year old i taught myself to play the guitar on this and i mean it is completely broken but it was in dublin in 99 it was in cork in 19 something it was of um on ibiza 2000 in cologne in 97 in Middleton in 99 it's completely broken but I also had my school friends sign it uh, some of them you can still see Fabian Imi yeah I learned to play on this I painted it but it's probably isn't that great <laughs> oh my gosh you know how long I have not touched a guitar anymore? But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep this one. If anybody like knows about um, instruments and what I can do to not restore it in a way that all of this that I wrote to over 20 years ago, 25 years ago even, I think in some cases it is removed but that I can stop the process of it breaking um let me know like I would love to keep it from breaking any further I guess this is it for today um we have unhauled enough for today and even though once you start you see so many other things that you could continue to unhaul but we've done well we've done quite well so See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Today we're doing one more thing. Um, and that's why you're seeing in my, me and my old car. I'm trying to get a quote for this car because I don't need a car. Because I have a van. I have a van. <laughs> but on a serious note, I am contemplating keeping this car for a few more weeks because I need to drop my son off at this university prep course and obviously this car is so much more efficient and therefore dropping him off is so much cheaper but as I've come to realize I have always so far always like this Saturday is the second time always found a reason to use the van to drop him off and it feels weird driving this car i love this car and i've had amazing amazing memories in this car this car turned me on to the sleeping in the car lifestyle or back onto it and made me realize that van life would be in fact affordable for me so i hold this car near and dear to my heart but there's an end to everything so I do need the money for, especially for some of the, like the electricity upgrades and the bigger things or potentially some repairs that and maintenance that I need to do. So I don't think I can afford not to sell it. And I'm just realizing the heating thingy was on and you probably couldn't have heard a thing. So, uh, 
let's get to a dealership well it's it's like a used car salesman who's per they're purchasing any car i got a quote from um, an online platform for 1529 euros for this car i'm i was expecting something in between 500 and 2500 so it's pretty much in the middle <laughs> it's a smack in the middle so i'm quite happy with that my neighbor also wants to buy the car but i think that he knowing this car and everything and what he needs to put into it is not willing to pay more than 500 and what I'm contemplating right now is do I want to potentially offer him the car for 500 and ask him in return to make me and, and purchase all like the materials and stuff for my upper cabinets I'm not sure if that's really worth a thousand or if I should be focusing on getting that money now, like the thousand uh, euros and putting it into maintenance because the maintenance of the, of like the mechanic of, of the van definitely needs to come first. No question asked. So let's get a quote from a place that actually looks at the car. I don't want to go to that place and wanting to drop it off for 1,529 euros and them then telling me, oh no, there's this, that, this, that, and we're actually just gonna give you 500. So let's get a quote. So. I just got a different opinion um, at this guy here. It's like five minutes from my home and I could almost, like it's 10 kilometers, so I could almost walk back, not really, but I could almost. <laughs> and he's offering me a thousand. Now I'm struggling and as much as I'm promoting that I love evil, like evilness in characters and that I'm not a good person because <laughs> I like that brand, but uh, of being a morally gray person because I sometimes am, but honestly, so knowing that somebody offered me a thousand euros for this car I now have this weird <laughs> fear of something happening I mean to be fair a thousand euros is not a lot for a car but I did not expect to get much in the first place so a thousand euros is good enough for this one or a thousand five hundred if um, the deal with the uh, online platform stands and now I have this irrational fear of something breaking and it being worthless. <laughs> ah, the weirdness of the human mind. I have an offer on the table for 1500 by this online platform. I have an offer on the table by this um, used car dealer for a thousand euros. And I don't know what to do because my neighbor wants this car as well. And he's not willing to pay as much potentially because he knows a little bit more in depth what this car is about and what he needs to put into it to be reliable enough for him to have his money in. I think that a dealership has much more flexibility to get their money's worth than somebody who, who would be relying on this car. I'm pretty sure that my neighbor only would be willing to spend around 500, which is much, much less than what I'm being offered. Now, my dilemma is that I love this neighbor. He's really helpful. He offered to help me find a van. He looked at it. He is a mechanic and understands a little bit about motors and everything. His best friend is a carpenter and they offer to support me with building my shelves. Uh, like I want cabinets, all upper cabinets. And I know that having a carpenter help me with that would be amazing. And I would love to offer this car to my neighbor in exchange for these cabinets um, because having a carpenter professionally make them would be worth a thousand euros, right? But on the other hand, right now I need to prioritize maintenance and repairs of the van. So, I mean, the more money that I can put into it, that these parts right now, the better. I, priority is I need money to put into the van in terms of like the structure, the uh, mechanics and not the living room. Even though my first upgrades <laughs> might not look like that's my priority, but these upgrades that I'm focusing on right now are like $10 upgrades, maybe $100 upgrades, but not much more. When I 
have the opportunity to either invest a thousand euros into cabinets or into uh, repairs and maintenance, it should go to repairs and maintenance first and foremost for me, for, for the van to last as long as possible and not to break down again. But as much as I'm promoting morally great characters and I love the brand of saying, hey, I'm evil, um, I'm, well, I'm evil might be a little bit of a stretch, but I'm not a good person. I don't claim to be. I'm a selfish person. I'm a manipulative person. Well, that's maybe a stretch as well. Um, but I love the brand of not being the perfect person and being a little bit morally great. And this right now shows me once again that I am much better than I would like to be. Um, I love how when your like brand falls apart uh, <laughs> in that way. But I'm in a moral dilemma. I selfishly should accept the money and put it into the van for it for repairs and maintenance. But I really do want to make a good price and, and give this car to my neighbor because he's just such a kind person. Um, the best that I, I mean, honestly, the wisest money-wise decision would be to spend some money on this car, like put a hundred bucks into it in terms of having it professionally cleaned and kind of like you would stage a, a house, you know, for, for a car and then trying to sell it on the open market. But that's also a lot of work, but I could probably get easily a thousand euros more if I would do all of that. Maybe, maybe new tires and I don't know. You know, some of these little things can really up the value a lot and on the open market. But then I know this is all, these are all of the things that a dealership would do and they are factoring in still how they would earn money from this. Otherwise they wouldn't buy it. So if he offers me a thousand, I could probably get 2000 on the open market, right? So money wise, it would be the worst, the worst decision to give this car to my neighbor for like 500 even if he makes cabinets for me. Stupid decision. It would so be a William the Bloody decision though, potentially, because following your heart, but it would not be a William Shakespeare decision. So Willie, 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 tell me, are we following William the Bloody or are we following William Shakespeare for this one? Maybe let's call my dad and let the third Willie who named this car help decide okay now i would love to stop the video but i'm driving so that's not happening so you can just stay there or you fall down ah, Billy, i see Billy.